Well guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jason. You're watching Old Car Auto Guy and we are officially getting back on the wall art project. I told you we were gonna be doing that very, very soon and I wasn't lying. But before we do that, I've gotta get the shop cleaned up a little bit. So stay tuned. Well, there we have it. We've got at least walking room. We don't have to tiptoe around things anymore and we get rid of some stuff that belongs down in the sheds, down in the sheds. And we got some project stuff, like the new front seats for uh, the old Mopar. These are out of that 2010 Ford Fusion that we had sitting at the lot that we're actually gonna junk because the motor's bad and it's got over 300,000 kilometers. I also have the rear seats um, that we're gonna try and fit in that car as well and all the seat belts and all that stuff. So we're gonna try and make everything work and make the car a little more comfortable to drive and uh, you know maybe even hook up the power seats and the heated seats and all that good stuff. But uh, that's one little project. We've also got, we've also got these drums, these this electric drum set that I bought several years ago with every intention of picking up playing the drums. I never did do it for a couple of reasons, mostly because of ambition, but secondly because uh, we don't have very much space in our house. Um, we live in a small house, so to have a spot to set that up, there's very limited that it wouldn't be in the way. The second one was is that we decided that I would put it in the shop and uh, in the winter time, it's very, very cold out here. We're not uh, inclined to come out here and do a whole lot of work uh, in the winter time, especially uh, for something I have to put a lot of effort into like playing the drums. I feel bad saying that even. Anyways, so we've got that out of the way. The toolbox is the next project. That will be something for another day. But, but one thing that we are gonna take a look at here today is my license plate collection that people have been sending me in. I've gone through a lot of them. I do have a few new ones here that we'll talk about in just a minute. But if you don't know what the wall art project is, I'm gonna put a link right here so you can go back and watch that playlist and see exactly what I'm talking about. The long and the short of it is, I'm collecting license plates to plate this wall about halfway and down right about below where these two stop signs are. If I get enough, I'd like to be able to do this side over here as well. And what we're gonna be doing is taking this front grill, or the, the front fascia part of a 78, 79 Chrysler Cordoba, as soon as I find a grill for it, we're gonna mount that with the bumper up here on the wall there's a plug-in right there in the middle and we're gonna light the thing up. So that is the wall art project. I've gotta get kind of the wall paper or whatever you wanna call it done first, the background. Then we can start fixing up, getting the uh, piece mounted on the wall as well as the bumper. But I gotta do this first. So we've got some plates that people have been sending me in. I've done a couple of videos on those and I wanna to touch base on a couple of extras that have come in since then. So here is the stack of plates. There's about 18 of them there that people have sent me in. Uh, the first one from Manitoba, that's from my buddy Shane Reynolds, who is Winnipeg Car Life. He sent me a couple uh, different sets of plates, but we've also got some that have come in from people who uh, are followers of the channel. This one is from uh, Jordan Matthew Snelling uh, from Marietta, South Carolina, and he sends me a South Carolina one. Thanks so much, Jordan, for sending this out to me. Uh, we are gonna get that hung up on the wall. We've also got one here from another buddy of mine whose channel I follow. This is a main plate with the uh, SPCA and uh, this one came with a little letter from uh, my buddy Errol who is known as the Maniac Variety on YouTube. Go over and check his channel out. Pretty hilarious guy. He does a lot of fun stuff uh, on that channel as well. And of course if you follow the channel long enough, you'll know that this is the front plate off of Grandma, which uh, we can retire now, seeing as how New Brunswick does not require front plates anymore. 
And a follower, a longtime follower, who is a local follower right here in St. Stephen, David, has sent me uh, some of these. He dropped them off at the shop there a little while back. And uh, they are old New Brunswick plates. Now, this one is from 66. Not sure what the M stands for. Uh, I know today they use the letter M on things like, uh, you know, heavy equipment, tractors, ambulances, uh, hearses, stuff like that. Not sure if it meant the same thing back then. Some people will say that it might have been designated uh, by location of where in New Brunswick you were from. So M might be Moncton, might be Miramichi, who knows. This one is an X. We got two of those from 1979, which I think I might even put one of these on the front of my Chrysler Cordoba because it is a 79. So I'll take the best of the two, clean them up, and stick them on the front of the car. Here is a plate from the late 80s and 90s uh, from New Brunswick. This one was last registered in 1991. And uh, we've got a pair of those. So thanks, David, for dropping those off. And uh, we are going to get ready to get these up on the wall. So what we've got to do first is get these uh, out of the way because I am going to cut them down, come down this way a little bit further. So let's get the screws out and we'll start pounding up some uh, license plates here. So that's going to do it for this portion of the video. Now we're going to move on to something else. So right now I probably look like a hot mess after working out here. It's very humid. It's not very hot, but it doesn't take much to break a sweat. So if you guys are new to the channel, I know a lot of you guys have jumped on this uh, channel because of my Panther platform, my grandma car, which you see behind me. But for those of you who are new and haven't seen my Chrysler Cordoba, the car that is now behind me, this is kind of one of the things that made me want to start this channel uh, with relationship to projects. It's an ongoing project. We've done several things to the car and uh, I have a playlist set up for that if you guys want to go check that out as well. So what we're going to do right now is we've had a few questions on some guys who have said they want to know how well the headlights work on grandma in the dark because although they do look dark, if you get up close, they're actually still quite transparent. As I've said before, the camera certainly doesn't do them any justice. It makes them look a lot worse than they are. They're not that bad. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go inside and get cleaned up. And once it does get dark out, we're gonna go for a little drive and I'm gonna let you guys see just exactly how good the headlights still are on Project Grandma. So guys, I don't know if you can see me right now, but we are outside. It is about 9.30, so it's just about dark. We're gonna get ready to take the car for a drive. But before we did that, I wanted to give you a comparison between the 2011 Ford Escape without tinted headlights compared to my Grand Marquis with tinted headlights against a white surface, which is my garage. So let's take a look. So obviously mine are pointed down a little bit further. This is just on low beam on both vehicles pointed against a white garage. The darkness of those lenses are a little bit deceiving. There's a plenty of light coming out here. So now for the real test, let's take it for a drive. Okay, so now is the moment of truth. We are out on a back road here where there's no lights and we're gonna check and see where these lights are as far as safety and whether or not we should be driving uh, with these tinted lights. So without further ado, I'm gonna turn these lights off. We're gonna take a look at the windshield. So just by looking at the windshield right now, this is low beam, there's high beam. I'm not sure if the camera's doing it any justice, but it's truly not very light. Now being outside the car, we're going to do the same thing. High beam, low beam. And again, I know you guys can't see me, but we're outside the car. And uh, if you look behind me, you will see how little light is actually coming out of this vehicle. Now, granted, we're not completely dark, but I'm thinking it's time for some LEDs. And even some of you have been asking about the tail lights. And I don't think the taillights are so much of an issue. Those light up really well. So it's a little freaky outside. I'm going to strike her back for home and we're going to close out this video. So guys, the long and the short of this test is don't tint your lights too dark. Because if you do, you won't be able to see down a backcountry road somewhere. If you're just driving around town, you're probably never going to have an issue. But 
I was out in the backwoods, even with a little bit of light in the sky, and it was very hard to see. So I think I might have gone a little bit too dark. Again, like I said, even though you can still see transparent through them, you can still see the reflective material, it was just a little bit too much. So the next stop is going to be probably eBay or Amazon to see what we can find for some replacement lenses that give you all the light you need, but still look cool. So that's going to do it for this episode of Old Car Auto Guy. I hope you guys continue to watch and follow all the episodes that I have on this Panther platform as well as all the other videos. Guys, if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing and hit that like button and follow along with everybody else. Still looking for those license plates. Like I said earlier, if you guys have any spare ones, my addresses are in the description box below. If you're looking for Old Car Auto Guy merch, I have my very own t-shirts in the first two links in the description box below. You can go down there and check them out and see what you think and help support this channel. Also, the Car Guy and Six Fan Show every Thursday night. This coming week, it will be on my channel once again, and we have all kinds of fun talking about cars and automotive talk. So if you're into that stuff and you want to follow along, please do so. It's Thursday evenings at 7 o'clock Central, 8 o'clock Eastern, and 9 local time. Guys, stay focused on the windshield, not the rearview mirror. I love you. God bless. Let's do it again real soon.